uterine fibroids or leiomyomas is the topic for this uh, video. So what are uterine fibroids? Well, uterine fibroids are they're benign. Okay, uh, progression to cancer is extremely rare. So think benign, and they're basically benign tumors of the smooth muscle in the uterus. Okay, smooth muscle in the uterus. They're the most common pelvic tumor, and they can occur in as much as seventy percent of women by age forty-five. So very common. Now I'm going to show you a diagram of uh, where these uh, uterine fibroids are most likely uh, to be found. Number one location is this location that I'm going to circle, subserous. This is the number one location. Put the number one there. Second most common is intramural, an intramural location. And the third most common are submucosal. So those are the top three locations. This, of course, is a diagram of the uterus. As you can see, there's other places where a ure uterine fibroid can ha uh, develop. Uh, there's one here inside the uterus. There's one here that's sort of kind of like um, outside. Pedunculated is the name. But those are the three most common. Now, important to remember that these fibroids have estrogen receptors on them. So because they have estrogen receptors, they can grow when these receptors are stimulated okay just want I'll touch back on this diagram a little bit later but just wanted to show you that now I would like to show you uh, these definitions because these definitions are important because these are the symptoms this is the symptomatology of a woman with uterine fibroids if she has symptoms because not always will there be symptoms there's asymptomatic small fibroids but if the woman has symptoms these are the symptoms so Menorrhagia, by definition, is a longer than normal duration of menstrual flow. So, for example, normally, you know, menstruation lasts, what, three to five days? So, for example, if, if it's greater than seven days. Okay, think duration with menorrhagia. Metrorrhagia is menstrual bleeding at irregular intervals. So, normally, the cycle is every month, you know, every 28 days. So, let's say it's happening at every 22 days, and, you know, every 20 days. Irregular intervals. Or it might even happen instead of the standard 28, 28, 28. The next month, 20 days later, you'll have menstrual flow. And then you go back to 28, and then next month, maybe 25. You know, irregular intervals. Now, there's another word that combines these two. Meno, metro, ragia. And what's that? Well, just like the word is combined, it's a combination of these two. Basically, longer than normal duration and menstrual bleeding at irregular intervals so those two combined okay all right so those are the the symptoms we'll uh, touch more on these symptoms uh, there's more symptoms of course you can have chronic pain in the pelvic area uh, pressure as well um, and because the uterus is so close to the bladder as the uterine fibroids increase they can compress on the bladder and cause urinary symptoms such as frequency and urgency and that's uh, something that can happen especially if the fibroids are very very large another thing that can happen is they can interfere with pregnancy uh, they can cause spontaneous abortions um, and obviously uh, if it's progressed to that point uh, you need to uh, intervene and treat uh, these uh, fibroids and I'll explain how a little bit later now let's get into the diagnosis well by far the most common way to diagnose it is a pelvic ultrasound that pelvic ultrasound will essentially show you that the woman has fibroids and will show you where um, interestingly sometimes you can even you know an experienced OBGYN can even tell just with a pelvic exam you know uh, they can uh, palpate up in, in, in large uterus or even a mass in the adnexal area and then you probably do CBC because most of the time if a woman comes to the doctor and uh, she's got uh, heavy menstrual bleeding she might be anemic so the CBC will tell you you know the hemoglobin and hematocrit values all right well let's head on into the treatment okay well the treatment there's no one surefire treatment it's really it depends there's sort of five 
five separate ways uh, that you treat and, and it depends on the situation. So the first one is if it's asymptomatic, okay, asymptomatic, you don't do anything. You just, there's no treatment. You might give an NSAID or something to for minor, uh, you know, discomfort, but there's no reason, there's no absolute obligation to treat if there's no symptoms. The second uh, category is postmenopausal women. Now, postmenopausal is interesting because you remember I touched on the fact that these uh, fibroids have estrogen receptors. Well, after menopause, they can regress the, the fibroids. So you might want to just um, watch and wait as the symptoms and the fibroids both will regress. So wait for regression. Now, of course, if they don't, then you can intervene, but that's an interesting category. Now we get into what you need to do when you're actually doing something. And the first category is women who still want to have children, still want a pregnancy, and they've got fibroids. So what do you do? Well, something called myomectomy. Myomectomy is basically where you're just taking out the fibroids. The uterus is still in place. You just take out the fibroids. Now, it sounds like a wonderful thing, right? But it's not always possible because sometimes the fibroids are not that accessible surgically. So there's another way and that is uh, called uterine artery embolization. Now what this does is, is kind of cuts off the blood supply to those fibroids and the aim is to uh, allow those fibroids to eventually infarct and uh, that hopefully will regress the size of those uh, fibroids and not interfere with pregnancy. Now finally this is a situation that most commonly is where you have you know great symptomatology you know, heavy menstrual bleeding, menometrorrhagia, that big word that I wrote about, and the woman is done having kids, well, then you just do a hysterectomy. And there's different types of hysterectomies. There's vaginal, and there's uh, intra-abdominal, and there's laparoscopic. One final thing I wanted to touch on is there's a medication called luprolide, and what this does is this medication... It's, it's known as a GNRH ag analog. And what this medication does is that it decreases uh, estrogen production. Okay? Decreases estrogen production. And that, you remember those estrogen receptors that are on the fibroids? What that does is when you give this medication, it allows the uh, fibroids to shrink. Uh, the medication essentially shrinks the fibroids because the estrogen is not... Uh, uh, stimulating those receptors because if you stimulate them the, the fibroids grow if you don't stimulate them the fibroids can shrink in size and oftentimes this medication is given for a period of time uh, and then the physician will do the hysterectomy or, or the myomectomy because it's easier to do the pr surgical procedures if you shrunk the, um, uh, the fibroids down as much as possible all right, now finally, I'd like to, well, you can look at this diagram again, you know, th this is an excellent diagram in my opinion, kind of shows you where the fibroids are, and I can sh it shows you other locations also. There's other, even more locations, and then, of course, this, this uterus is the big, the big uh, topic, essentially, uh, where this pathology is occurring, and then, of course, you have the cervix here, and then the vagina there, and they also put in an ovary and a fallopian tube, so this is an excellent diagram. So I'll finish off with a couple of vignettes here. So here's the first one. 44-year-old G3P3 female presents with several years of progressively heavier and prolonged menstrual periods. Okay. Over the past months, she has also experienced lethargy and weakness. She recently visited her primary care physician for tiredness and was diagnosed with moderate anemia. Hemoglobin of 9, 12 to 16 is normal, approximately in women. She's got nine. Family history is remarkable for a sister who underwent hysterectomy at age 49 for uterine fibroids. Bimanual examination discloses a 16-week enlarged, firm, and irregular uterus. Agnexal and rectal examinations are normal, and stool is heme negative. Pelvic ultrasound shows an enlarged uterus with irregular contour and multiple intramural masses. Well... It's nice to have a diagram of intramural fibroid. Consistent with uterine fibroids, both ovaries are visualized and normal. This is a classic vignette for uh, 
uh, uterine fibroids. There's one more. 39-year-old woman presents to a gynecologist for annual exam. She has no specific complaints. Her menstrual cycle is regular, occurring every 28 to 30 days, lasting about five days. She has, however, noticed that recently her periods have become heavier. Uh, on pelvic exam, she has an enlarged uterus about the size of an eight-week pregnant uterus. The uterine pregnancy test is negative. Her full blood count is normal. If pelvic ultrasound shows two fibroids within the uterine wall, measuring two centimeters each. So now that's another presentation of uterine fibroids.